Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition. Today, we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 350. Please turn to it. Always make sure the book is in front of you, that you're doing the work with me. Don't just, as I said before many times, don't just stare at the screen. Page number 350, number 29, as it says right here, we are given an equation here, which looks something like this. We are told that h equals 1.88L plus 32.01 and the question simply is in the context of this equation what does this number 1.88 signify if h measures the height of an adult male and L represents the length of his let me make sure I spell it correctly. And it's pronounced femur, not fur, fi. If, if L represents the length of his femur. I had no idea what, what a femur was. I looked it up in the dictionary. And apparently it's some kind of a bone, spinal bone, in, uh, that the vertebrate have. And this equation tells us what the height of an adult male we can expect to be based on the length of his femur. The question is, in the context of this equation, what does this number signify, 1.88? It's very straightforward. What this 1.88 tells us is that for every one inch, this is measured in inches, for every one inch increase in the length of his femur, we can expect, we can expect about, approximately about 1.88 inch increase in his height. And that's what that tells us. That's, that's what that coefficient tells us. That's the slope of the line, 1.88, which simply tells us that every time L goes up by 1, H will go up by 1.88. 1 what? Well, whatever the unit happens to be. In this case, it is the inch. And therefore, every time the length of the femur goes up by 1 inch, we can expect the height of the adult male to go up by about 2 inches. 1.88 inches to be precise. That's your intercept. Apparently, that is the average height of an adult, average height of a, of a, of a, of a male when he is born. That was it. And just pick the answer choice that comes very closest to it. It says the approximate increase in men's height in inches for every one inch increase in his femur. There you go, that's answer choice D. What we wrote down here is basically the same as what you will find in D. Number 30. Number 30 says, well, number 30 we have a geometry problem. We have a quadrilateral that is given to us that looks something like this. And we are told that this angle, this angle right here is the right angle. So I'm going to first put down everything that we know and then we'll talk about it. A, B, C, D. The first thing we are told is that the line AD is parallel to BC. This BC and AD they are parallel, obviously, because well, not obviously, it doesn't have to be obvious. It's, all we are told is that, it's, that it's a quadrilateral, so they don't have to be parallel, but in this case they are. So I should not have said obviously. There was nothing obvious about it. We have to be told. So these two lines are parallel. This line is parallel with that line. And we are told that line CD happens to be half the length of line AB. Question simply is, based on this information, what's the measure of angle B? What we're looking for is this angle B. 
how much it, what is what is this measure let's see what we can do first let's first introduce the information that is given to us and then we'll go from there okay we'll do it in a red red pen so we can differentiate between how the picture appeared and what we are adding to it so we know cd is half the length of ab why don't we make ab half the length of ab why don't we make cd x if cd is x inches long then ab would have to be two inches two x inches because ab obviously is twice cd so that's that part now let's draw a perpendicular here if we drop a perpendicular, what we notice is that if C to D is X, then let's call this point E. Let's call this point E. If C to D is X, then B to E must also be X. After having that much work, after having that much work, do you recognize something? We should immediately recognize once we have done this, I'm going to reproduce, I'm going to reproduce the triangle ABE here. ABE A. -B -E, A B and E. What we have is that A to B is 2 and B to E is 1. The fact that it's 1x and 2x, do you recognize now? It's a 34, it's a 30, 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60, and 90 triangle. Because in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we have done this before, many concepts we're going to come across over and over again as we do the exams. And I don't want to keep repeating the same bloody thing over and over again. I expect you to have watched this video in the sequence, in proper sequence from day one. And if you don't do that, there's nothing I can do about it. Because, but I'm not going to stand here and repeat everything over and over again. We have covered the uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle before. And what we do is, since we have three different kind of angles, 30, 60, that should say 60. We have three different kind of angles here, 30, 60, and 90. So since we have three different kind of angles, the mnemonic that I use, The memory device that I use is that since there are three different angles, 30, 60, 90, I put down 1, 2, 3. And once you put down 1, 2, 3, you put a root on the, on the very last one. Once you have done that, you simply arrange them in order. One is the smallest one, which means 30 degrees should face the smallest size, which it does. Two is the largest number among these three. Two is the largest number, and two faces the 90 degree, which means this side has to be root 3. The fact that this side happens to be root 3 times x, we are not interested in that part. We are not interested in that part at all. What we are interested in is in the fact that we just established that this angle is 60. This is 60, and we know now, let's erase this part now, and we know that from here to here is 90. That's it, we are done. So the angle B, angle B is simply 60 plus 90, 150 degrees, and that's answer choice A. And that's what it was. But it all boils down to being able to recognize a 30, 60, 90 triangle in an exam. They always come in the ratio of 1 to root 3 to 2. So they should, they should be put in order from smallest to largest. 1 to root 3 to 2. The side that is, that is 1 faces the 30 degrees. This will face the 60 degree and this will face the 90 degree. There you go. So that was number, that was number, number 30. And like anything else in this exam, like anything else in this exam, if you know this concept, these problems go very fast. They should not take three, four, five minutes. They go very fast if you know what the hell you're doing. Do you understand? Just being able to recognize 30, 60, 90 triangle like that. Number 31. Here we are told that we have a total of $8 to spend. We're going to buy, we're going to buy apples and bananas. We are told that A costs 65 cents each. And we are further told that B costs 75 cents each. The cost of apple is 65 cents each. The cost of banana is 75 cents. And we have already bought 5 apples apparently. Question is, what is the maximum, what is the maximum number of bananas that can be bought? What is the maximum number of bananas that can be bought 
given the fact that we only have eight dollars to spend. Let's set it up, shall we? So we're going to represent A. We're going to use A to represent the number of apples we are buying. Okay, A for the number of apples that we are buying. And similarly, we use letter B to represent the number of bananas. And since each apple costs 65 cents, if you were to buy one apple, we'll spend 65 cents. If you were to buy two apples, we'll spend 65 times two. If you buy 10 apples, it's 65 times 10. If you buy A apples, we'll spend 65 times A cents, not dollars. Okay, we're writing in cents. Similarly, if you were to buy B apples of B number of bananas, if you were to buy B numbers of bananas, we'll spend 75 times B cents because each banana costs 75 cents and all together we only have 800 cents to spend 800 cents to spend the fact that I'm setting it up as an equality don't worry about it don't put down inequality because that only confuses things it makes things complicated to no reason at all let's just follow the work and I'll tell you what's going on okay and then we are told that we bought five apples right here somewhere we are told that there we go we buy five apples so let's put five in here 65 times 5 plus 75 times B. I want to pick up some speed here. That's 800. Let's subtract, let's subtract 65 times 5 from both sides. So 75B would equal 800 minus 65 times 5. How much is 65 times 5? Oh, don't look at me. How the hell do I know? I don't go around memorizing 65 times 5. But luckily, I am bright. I am bright and therefore I know that 65 times 10 is just 650. Well if 65 times 10 is 650, 65 times 5 should be half of that, 325. Because I know what is half of 600 and I know what is half of 50. There we go. 800 minus 300 would have been 500, therefore 800 minus 325 should be 475. So what we end up here is the 75B equals 475. Stay with Stay with me, this story is very important. Let's do, let's do this rest of it on the top here so that, so that we can see it properly. Because we're getting close to climax and we want to put way down there. 75B is equal to 475. Let's divide, let's divide both sides by 25. Okay, if you're going to divide both sides by 25, you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention to what's going on. We know 100 has 425s. If 100 has 425, if 100 has 425, I'm just going to speak instead of writing it like a baby. If 100 has 425, 800 should have 825. 300 has 1225. 400 has 1625, which makes perfect sense because 4 times 4. 1625 and all the 75 we have here, so it's 19. If we divide both sides by 25, we have 325 here and we have 1925s here. You see what we just did? We divided both sides by 25 in one shot. So 3b equals 19 which means b must equal 19 over 3. Let's divide 19 by 3. 18 has 6, 18 has 6 threes. 6 threes are 18. After we take away 18 from 19 we have a remainder of 1 and 1 must be divided by 3. So it looks like b equals 6 and 1 third. And last time I tried to buy, last time I went to the market grocery store and I tried to buy 6 and 1 third banana, the manager threw me out of the store. So I, I'm not going to try it again. We're going to buy only six bananas. Do you understand? Very difficult to buy a third of a banana. And I, I even tried to, I even tried to make my case with the manager, store manager. I said, look, I, you never told me that the bananas that I buy have to be integers. Apparently, he wasn't into integers. Number 32. Number 32, we are told that A is equal to 34. This is a very silly question. Very silly question. I don't even know why the bloody hell it is even on the exam, but it is there, so we have to talk about it. We are told that this angle, which is A, is 34. No, that's not it. This is angle A, B, See, not that it makes any difference. It makes absolutely no difference which one we call A, B, and C. A, we are told is 34. The question simply is how much is B plus C? How much is B plus C? Well, B plus C is obviously 180 minus 34. B 
e plus e has to be 180 minus 34 because all three of them are, all three of them add up to 180. 180 minus 30 would have been 150, so it's 146. Do you understand? 180 minus 30 would have been 150, but we're not subtracting 30, we are subtracting 34. 4 more than 30. So instead of 150, it's going to be 4 less, 146. Number 33. Number 33 is an interesting one. We are asked to find mean of 5. We are told actually, we are not asked to find, we are told that the mean of 5 number is 1600. The mean of 500, 5 number, we are told, is 1600. And here are the 5 numbers 700, 1200, 1600, 2000. And finally X. And our job is to find out what that X is. I don't have it with me right now but sometime in the past in the first eight days I, we came across this kind of concept twice already. They come up all the time and if you know how to figure out the average which of course everybody does and the traditional way, the orthodox way, the classical way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the arithmetic way is simply to add up the numbers and divide by a number of numbers and set it up like an equation. I'm not going to do the bloody thing. I'm, uh, let's not, let's not, let's not be a freaking geek, okay? There is a quicker way. There is a quicker way, and if you want to learn that, on my channel, there is a series of video on basic math. Basic math. Or better yet, if you simply type in, because I don't remember the day when I covered it, I don't have it with me right now. Or if you simply type in in the YouTube search, just search for, always put my name in there, put down Keshwani, and then put down average. See what comes up. And, and, and basic math along with Keshwani, basic math, and then search for average. You will find something with my name on it. Watch that series. Watch the series of basic math. There are, I think, five or ten videos on that concept. It teaches you how to figure out the average. Here, luckily, we only have four or five numbers. Sometimes we have, there are ten of them. You don't want to sit there and waste your time. So, enough said. Let's, let's start the process. Let's start the process. Let's begin. We know, we are told that the mean of five number is 1600. We are told that. But well, this guy is already 1600, so we don't have to worry about him. Let's make this guy 1600. Let's make this guy 1600 by taking the 400 from him. Think of this in terms of money. We want everybody to have $1,600. This guy already has $1,600. This guy has $400 more. Let's take it away from him and give it to him. And when we do that, what do you suppose happens? Now this guy is 1600. This guy is 1600. And this guy has to have 1600 at least, just to carry his own weight. But then we find out that this guy only has 700. This guy, this guy is $900 short. This guy is $900 short. Somebody has to make up for that shortfall. And that somebody, that fall guy who's gonna make up for the shortfall of 900 is this guy right here. So X needs to be 1600 plus 900, hence X is 2500. Number 33 that was. Let's do number 34. In that basic math series, you will learn quite a lot of things. The reason it's called basic because it is indeed very basic, but they are useful information. And here we are told that y is equal to mx. And we are further told that when y is equal to 17, x is equal to a. Question is, what's the value of y when a is equal to 2a, rather, when x is equal to 2a? What's the value of a? What's the value of y when x is equal to 2a? And this is what we are given here. And the equation that we're going to use is this one. It's very straightforward, very simple. So let's start y is equal to mx. Y, when y is 17, we are told that x is, x is equal to a. Now we can figure out the value of m. This equation implies that m must equal 17 over a. 17, divide both sides by a and 17 over a. There we go. Now we have the value of a, a uh, value of m rather. We're going to use the same equation one more time. y is equal to mx. 
we have the value of m, we're going to put it in here. We have the value of x, we put it in here, figure out the value of y. m is equal to 17 over a. And x is given to us as 2 times a. There we go. 2 times a, 2, two times a times 17 over a, a is drop out. And we end up with 17 times 2 turns out that y is equal to 34. That was the end of that was the end of uh, that page, the gradient problem, four of them. I had I did not realize that we were doing the gradient problem. I had not realized that we were no longer into multiple choice problems. But we finished the four gradient problems that you see on page number 352. That's what this is. Page 352. We are no longer at page 350. Tomorrow we'll meet We'll, tomorrow we'll meet and do the remaining last remaining five problems that you see on the next page on page number 353 and we'll finish those se that section and those five problems on the last page of course they are not easy questions they are the last five for a reason I'll see you tomorrow we'll pick up from where we left off if you wish to get hold of me if you would like to work with me if you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you to get you ready for the exam to help you get get, get a better score you can reach me always at Kashwani Prep, that's P-R-E-P, Kashwani Prep, at iCloud.com. Alright, bye now.